Hello everyone. So I've done this video because I wanted to share something with everyone um, about a little item I've been using for the last few weeks. And it's quite literally saved me hundreds of pounds. Uh, I'm not joking, it's saved me a ton of money. Um, at least for now anyway. Uh, of course I don't know how it's going to work with other scopes, other cameras etc. But it seems to have worked alright with my gear, i.e. the Red Cat 51 and the Zenistar 61 from William Optics and my new camera, the ESI 533MC Pro from uh, ZWO So, if you are looking at buying this sort of camera, dedicated Astro camera and you own uh, this type of filter, a clipping filter um, specifically designed to go into uh, the Canon crop sensor DSLR a bit like this one here, my Canon 77D and you may find this uh, video quite interesting if you don't already know about the item that I'm about to talk about. So when I decided to buy this sort of camera, uh, it didn't take me long to realise that I was going to have to upgrade my filters to the 2 inch round variety. Because um, when it comes to filters all my eggs are in one basket, because um, all I own are these clipping filters specifically designed to go into the Canon crop sensor DSLR. Uh, but I was wrong, uh, totally wrong. I come across this little beauty here, and um, yeah, it doesn't look much, does it? You could probably even state this as some sort of use of space for or something, but what this is, is the Astronomic M48 EOS to clipping adapter. So what does it do? Well, it essentially turns this clipping filter into a two inch round, which enables me to use it with this camera. So, how much I buy for? Well, I bought it for £30. Um, you probably think that's a little state, uh, state but for what I've actually saved, um, I think it's well worth the money. So I suppose we'll put this in a bit of context. I'll show you the three main filters that I use and let you know how much I've personally saved by using this adapter. So there's the three filters main filters I like to use. So the first one is the quad band filter from Skytech. I like to use this with uh, nebula targets to capture them. Uh, the other one I've only used it once. Uh, it's the Astronomic tw uh, 12 nanometer hydrogen alpha Narragon filter. Uh, something I want to get into. Uh, back end of this year I think I need to get a couple more filters. I um, want to do more narrowband imaging. And finally the El Pro Max from Skytech. I've been using this all through Galaxy season. I like to use it with Galaxies. The reason is because it lets uh, it's got a wider band pass, uh, lets more light in or through, if you like. So to uh, replace uh, these three with a two-inch uh, round version, it's going to cost me in the region of about six hundred pound. So for the sake of this for thirty pound, I think it's it's really good. As well, there is now. I'll just. Uh, show you how to install the filter and, and uh, attach it to the, uh, the equipment I use. So to fit the filter, all you have to do is just the same as fitting it into crop sensor DSLR to be honest. Just place it in there, it'll go in both ways. So as you can see I just place it in there, just clip it in. And then what we'll do is we'll fit it on the red cap first. So this is just uh, sort of the screw bit that fits in the end here. I've just took that off. And I'm just going to screw it in, like so. Um, once I've got that screwed in, I just screw it to the end of the uh, spaces here that's on the camera, like so. And that'll just screw onto the end of the red cut like that. Done. Okay, so with the Zenith Star 61. It's uh, slightly different, so what I'll do is I'll just flip this filter around like so. So it's facing the other direction. And with the Zenithar 61, um, I use the flat 61 here, the fill flattener. And you've got to break this down. Um, and all I'll do is just fit in there, in the middle of the flattener, and then just put it back together. The setting on this that's written on the William Optics uh, website is 
0.9 millimeters. Uh, now, I did go on Cloudy Night uh, forum um, and going through. Uh, someone asked the same question where did you set it and said uh, you set it as per normal as stated on that website but you add I think it was roughly uh, 0.6 millimeters to compensate for the filter that's in there Obviously, that's quite hard to do but uh, get that roughly if we go about half a millimeter turn that a few times that's about right and then just lock it off like you normally would and then all you got to do is just Put that on there and obviously that fits onto the scope. So, there we go. Um, oh, I don't know what the sun's doing. It uh, keeps popping out and popping in and keeps popping in and out uh, behind clouds. Anyway, um, I've just ordered a filter tray uh, from ZW1. What it's going to do is it's going to replace this space here. So I'll take that replace it with the filter drawer. I should be able to use this adapter with my filters uh, with this draw because if I read it rightly you screw it into the drawer and it just clips in and out it's going to make my life a lot easier and um, because let's face facts the um, the way I'm doing it now is a pain in the backside I won't have to wear uh, this won't have to break everything down break the fill flattener down anymore and keep messing about with the uh, the uh, settings on it Um anyway what we'll do is I'm going to hop inside go on the computer show you a couple of places where you can purchase the adapter from and also show you the thread from the forum cloudy nights and um, talking about the settings on the field flattener 61a with the uh, um, William Optics Zenith Star 61 anyway come let's do it oh yeah um, well before going on a computer would you believe it um, as I've come in the delivery turned up with the filter drawer uh, so I've, I've just installed it here there's the joy I've put the adapter already in. A uh, little bit of an issue, um, not a major issue, it's fixable. Uh, so when I screwed the adapter in, uh, it was sort of protruding uh, at the bottom, so it wouldn't actually uh, fit in. Uh, so what I did was I just loosened it off slightly, uh, about half a turn, and it fits in fine now. Uh, as you can know, hear, it's a little rattly because it is loose, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get a, a sort of small washer and fit it in between the drawer and the adapter and that should sort that um, and make my life a lot easier oh well, yeah I'm quite uh, what a coincidence I turned up actually as um, as I'm talking about it so yeah brilliant all right so here we are uh, here's the shop I bought the adapter from uh, Rother Valley Optics uh, if you live in the United Kingdom and uh, you may be aware of this store I've been using for a while I've, I've pretty much bought nearly all my gear from this store uh, and it's uh, priced at £30 here uh, including that in the description down there so you can use it for camera adapters <clears throat> the other one is the astronomic website and as I said uh, it's a uh, 24 uh, 90 in euros um, <clears throat> and here's the reference from cloudy nights um, Let's see, uh, where is it? Here it is, this bit here. Uh, stating about the back focus. Uh, so using all three adapters, uh, or all three spaces, and uh, gets it to 55. Uh, and this is the 12.9, which is what I've been using anyway when I'm uh, using the DSLR on it. And that gets you the rest of the way. I haven't seen anything else to say otherwise. Uh, on I did test out of in my last video I was getting some star trail in the corners and I've just it as per what was said on this site and it seems to have corrected that so um, yeah uh, for some reason I got in my head that I needed to sort of get the 55 millimeter uh, spacing from the optical sort of like the glass element that's inside the flattener down to the uh, center um, Obviously, by the sounds of this, that's not the case at all. Okay, so I think I'll just finish up there and uh, quickly summarise. So, I don't know if it's going to, this uh, adapter is going to work with other equipment, scopes, cameras, etc. I can't see why it wouldn't, uh, but in terms of what I'm using, it seems to work fine. Um, obviously, the filter draw's just turned up. Um, I've got a slight issue with the rattling, but uh, I've got an idea. I uh, should be able to sort it out. Um, no doubt you'll you'll find out in a future video um, whether I have done or not. 
Uh, I have tried to find other adapters for different brands of camera, etc. Uh, I didn't have any luck, to be honest. Um, not to say they're not out there. Um, if you are watching this video and you, you, you are aware of any such adapter for other brands, etc., please uh, leave a comment if, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, that would be much appreciated. Um, it would help others out um, in the future. And um, yeah, that's it. Hope this video has helped. I hope. Um, hopefully it saves some people some money, maybe. And uh, on that note, take care everyone. Please, guys, and bye for now.